Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is BSL 17 Hasu League, round of 16, group C, 12 o'clock location. We have the friend of the channel, Rancor, starting as the Grey Zerg, bottom left hand corner, we have Biagster, starting as the Teal Protoss. Unfortunately, this is all I got of group C of round of 16. I don't know if players dropped out or they did not upload their replays or what happened there. Um, I'm somewhat disappointed overall, I'll have to say. This is going to be an apocalypse. Between the two, by extra pretty solid player. I was trying to find out how well he did in previous BSL seasons, but I couldn't find... I couldn't find which season he had been in previously. Rancor is a fierce competitor, and I would not be shocked, considering the improvement of his play, if he's in the semifinal, if not potentially the final this season. We'll see. He's got a lot of... Uh, there are a lot of tough players out in the field, though, I have to say. Probe Scout making its way out. Looks like it's headed towards the right-hand spawn. This is a three-player map, rather than directly towards Rancor's base. Rancor going for an Overlord first build, rather than a nine pool. I would not, Rancor's MO tends to be what, I don't know if it's adjusted since previous, but he does like going for large unit containments early. And then following that up, being very, very aggressive, and then following that up with very, very aggressive macro. Now it's possible that Rancor has adjusted his style of play since. Looks like he is going to go for an overpool in this end of thing. And I would not be shocked if Rancor has improved considerably since, but we will have to see. It is a forge opener for Biagster, which I think actually plays pretty strongly to Rancor's style of play. He's not dropping the gas, so it looks like he is in fact going to go ahead and scout with the drone, but this does suggest with the lack of gas that he is just getting these initial zerglings out to deal with this first probe so that he can get that initial hatchery down rather than going for aggressive zergling run buys or something along those lines so spawning pool i'm going to complete he's got the resources it looks like the probe not quite in position to stop that hatchery from completing four zerglings queued that drone going to be able to so seize that initial photon cannon being built <clears throat> and that should be that should cause this drone to immediately move towards a third base location. And by Axter, as a result of all of this, I don't think he's actually might even could have even canceled a pair of Zerglings there if he wanted to. But it looks like he wants to keep the Zerglings out. Baya not doing a great job of keeping that probe alive. It's eaten a huge amount of health. It looks like that drone, rather than going to the third, is going to draw all the way back. And Rancor able to do a pretty good swarm round. He is building some additional Zerglings now that... Maybe just a little bit of tournament nerves now. Now that drone making its way towards the third base could also be a little bit of unfamiliarity with Apocalypse. It is one of the newer maps. Assimilator dropped at the natural expansion even before the gateway's finished. So I'm wondering if Baia is going to make a very, very rapid push towards some uh, higher tier tech. We'll have to see if that ends up being Corsair. Quick DTs, maybe try to accelerate some sort of drop, something along those lines. Honestly, early game drops where you're catching your Zerg opponent off guard are, have gone very, very out of favor because of 973 and the things that can counter it in the early game. That was interesting. The drone decided to attack its own egg. Yeah, I think Rancor playing a little bit slightly nervous. Gateway right there, blockading the front. This is still a gap that Zerglings could shoot if they had even uh, insufficient numbers right here. But with the probe blockading, that cannon should be sufficient to, to wean their numbers where there aren't going to be quite enough. But once there's six Zerglings, this could be a much more significant threat. Now it's wide open. So Rancor might want to shoot this gap before that Zealot's in line. Yeah, so moving down, even going to go for the cannon right as that Zealot. This is lucky on Biagster's part. Well, is it? Yes, lucky on Biagster's part that that Zealot spawned right when it did. I think Rancor would have been better suited going for the run by rather than going for the cannon kill, but that leaves that cannon very, very fragile. Should Rancor opt? Yeah, he's already deciding to go for a Hydralis follow-up. And honestly, if I was by Axter at this stage, I would kill that cannon to replace it with something else immediately. Because yeah, it's another cannon down, but this having a low health cannon as part of your defense could cost you instead of having a full health cannon along that edge. We do see range being upgraded very, very quickly. And a Dragoon going to take the field. So we got, and this could be interesting. Uh, we've seen the Dragoon defenses previously. We have a Zealot now making its way to the natural expansion. A few Zerglings 
are making their way out to try to help defend this. Looks like, is that... It looks like one drone gets picked off. I don't know that that's... That's not that much, and honestly, not a lot of other drone disturbance here in the natural expansion. If, he can, if by extra can get an additional kill, that would be fantastic. But he's going to be able to march into the main to confirm that the Hydalus are not yet spawning, but they are on their way. Also getting a kind of good look at the overall worker count on top of everything else. Also confirming that Zergling speed not completed, so they're not going to be part of the grouping. But this is going to be one gate. Okay, now we got a three gateway flood behind this. I will be interested to see if the timing of this works out. So we got four gateways now. So it's going to be five gateways total flooding of Dragoons. Does this... It looks like Rancor, despite the early damages, he's still going upgrades, but dropping that fourth hatchery suggests that he's actually going to fold back to more of an economic play rather than deciding to shoot the front, which, considering how much damage he's done to the cannon and the lack of cannons here on the front, he might have, honestly, if he was just building Hydralis right now and going for a flood on the front right as we speak, I think that would be game. Instead, though, with the flood of gateways, this could potentially catch... Rancor off guard. The early plus one multiple Dragoon timing push. And we saw this earlier. I'm trying to remember who executed it. It might have been by extra in the round of 32. But I'm wondering if this is kind of a new generalized play. Evolution Chamber now out in the front. We got five hatcheries, so it's going to be five hatch Hydra. As far as the counter adjustment, that is. So, Matt, just to put things in perspective right here. Max economic output is four gateways on one base. If you have standard mineral patches and gas, this is six gateways overall, which lets you know, which is what Protoss usually folds to much later after they have a Stargate, after they have a lot more tech, but that lets you know how heavy the troop production is right now from Biaxter. And let's see if Rancor is going to be able to defend it. I'm not sure that he's going to be able to, and I like the decision to do this on this map in particular, because you have this high ground abuse that you can do to basically bait your opponent and to kind of force them into engaging where there is maybe advantageous ground positioning where you have that misfire uphill. A grouping of Hydrals here. One problem though is if the Zerglings can sneak, if you if you micro quite well as a Zerg player, the Zerglings are able to get on top of the Dragoons. They can make quick work, but the Dragoons looking to engage, trying to walk back on the high ground. The Zerglings are managing to get up there in front to provide some spotting, but Rancor is still holding the low ground primarily, and he's also now able to get in, but he's also not focus firing down the Hydralisks, or sorry, the Dragoons, which is something he really needs to do, and right now with the focus fire and sufficient amount of troops, he is chewing into Byaxter's army. Oof, yeah, and Byaxter getting absolutely obliterated, so it looks like, so we got five Dragoons versus, not sure how many Hydralisks, eight Hydralisks and more to come. Rancor splitting that army a little bit. Now Byaxter might have played himself. He's only got two cannons here out on the front. He's got a lot of production, but Rancor off three bases can outproduce Byaxter on three, although the drone count isn't absolutely massive, and it looks like he's splitting up a lot of these Hydralists to allow these Dragoons to group up comparatively. However, Hydralists still trade very, very well. So we got three Dragoons left, one of them very, very weak, more Dragoons grouping up, and problem for Byaxter is he committed so heavily to this that he really needs to turn this either into a kill or otherwise Rancor is just going to catch up economically and run him over. No third gas for Rancor as of yet, nor has he dropped a Spire or any other uh, additional tech. I don't see he has made his way towards Lair, waking, waiting on Overlord speed as well, but I think he knows he can get aggressive here because he doesn't have the threat of Dark Templar with this many Dragoons. That's a lot of gas that's not spent on other tech. And if Rancor can find a way to get to Lurkers, That'll basically be game. So he's got a lot of options to win right here. Right now, he's going to push in and go for the focus fire of Hydralisks versus Dragoons. The Byaxter not grouping up, focus firing the Hydralisks otherwise. And now the Hydralisks able to push them all the way to the natural expansion. And that forge, is it going to... So Rancor focus firing that forge. Let's see if armor completes. It's going to be close. It looks like armor is in fact going to complete which is very, very important when it's going to be just infantry versus infantry battles here. But Rancor is still holding the ground at the natural expansion and producing more and more troops that are flooding towards this natural. And there's, again, a lack of can... Look, you can see how quickly that cannon got wiped out. Maybe Baya, in fact, did, in fact, wipe out his own cannon, that gateway on the front at risk. And it looks like 
as this reinforces, Rancor going to have the continual advantage pressing into this, and we don't have a, a cannon flood to try to stabilize things. So plus one armor helps against the plus one weapons from Rancor opposite side, but it looks like Rancor just has too much and is going to be able to continually press into this. He just needs to group up the troops. Honestly, if he makes his, he's adding on additional hatchery, if he made his way to Lurker Tech as well, that would have been game winning, although it's kind of silly to go into Lurker Tech when you get all the Dragoons, because anyway. But the lack of the observ observatory and whatnot. Anyway. Rancor sneaking in. There's nothing now defending that natural expansion. We've got more Hydralisks pouring their way in. And the fresh Hydralisks staging towards the front to absorb the initial hits of these Dragoons. The Dragoons trying to stutter step their way back, but it's four, and that's also opening up a breach at the natural expansion at this stage. Before it was bad, Biaxter couldn't keep up with the economy of Rancor. Now that is certainly the case. Waiting for a, a GG. It looks like he's going to wait for the last round of... Dragoons to press out. <clears throat> but what? Yeah, there's GG. Rancor takes game one. Gonna move into game two. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.